Hello, thanks for joining us on our top 10 on four certification error series. Today, our focus will be on four requirement definition. Four requirements can result from a number of factors. And to prevent that, we have to look at different elements for a fully defined requirement. This includes the requirement necessary, appropriate, and ambiguous, complete, singular, feasible, verifiable, correct, and conforming. Failure to define this in the onset and result in a number of issues as we go further down the design life cycle. We first need to identify if a requirement is necessary. A requirement we deem necessary must define the essential capabilities, characteristics, constraints, or quality factor that are needed to satisfy the higher level requirement or the certification requirement for the article to be designed. We also look and see if the requirement itself is appropriate. The specific intent and the amount of detail for the requirement statement should be sufficient at the level, and when we talk about the level in the design, we're looking at the system, software, hardware. Um, we need to make sure we have appropriate details that will drive the designer to ensure that the end product meets the need for that solution. So the, le the level of requirement abstraction, as a level of detail, the level of its decomposition must be appropriate to its level. So there's a level that is adequate at the systems, there's a level that's adequate at the hardware, and there is a level that is appropriate at the software. And software and hardware are the same level, but we'll refer to those at the component level. So we need to make sure it's appropriate at the component level. Next, we'll look at if a requirement is ambiguous. If it is, it'll create some issues down the line as we go from implementer to implementer. Um, we use the word implementer here to define the developer, the software developer, the hardware developer. We have to make sure that the requirement clearly details or dictates what needs to be done not how it should be done, but what needs to be done. And to ensure that stakeholders are also pulled into this definition and have that buy-in. So we're looking at customers, we're looking at the developers, we're looking at the program management, internal stakeholder, external stakeholder, um, the certification authority, that that actually does meet the intent as required at the certification level. Next, we'll look at the completeness of the requirement. Is the requirement complete? And there are two ways to look at this. We're looking at the flow top down. That's uh, when we do a validation to ensure that the lower level requirements cover the gamut of the need defined at the higher level requirement. The requirement should sufficiently describe the necessary capability, uh, characteristics, constraints, or quality factor to meet the need of the product being developed. And generally, at the component level, this information is obtained from the higher level requirement, i.e., the system requirement. The system requirement also would get this information from the parent requirement, and this is generally referred to as a customer scan. A requirement also has to be singular. The requirement should state a single capability, characteristic, constraint, or quality factor. A good example of that would be for a primary flight display, when we're looking at the weight, 
we're able to define that and when you look at that requirement it's a single characteristic that is defined in that requirement and we should be able to clearly define what that is now this example used can work in two ways we can give a weight if there's a target weight we need to heat with a tolerance but generally it is not a best practice to say oh the PFD should be 25 pounds the question is what happens when it's half a pound over half a pound less or less than half a pound over or less than half a pound less does it fail and those elements in the requirement capture will be dealt with in a different session or lecture series that defines writing good requirements. Now we'll look at the feasibility of the requirement. The requirement should be realizable within entity constraint. So when you have a design, there are constraints that come with it. We have costs, we have schedule, we have the technology, we have the legal aspect, we have the ethical aspect and the safety aspect. Engineers can design a solution whose cost outweighs the benefits. In that case, it's not a practical or feasible solution. Or we can have a solution that exceeds the needed schedule. And by the time the product comes to light, that need is gone. Or a solution that is desired, but the technology is not there to support it. Or a solution that is proposed, which violates a lot of laws, both domestic and international. So those are things we have to put in mind as we capture requirements for a product. Next, we look at the verifiability. Is the requirement verifiable? Requirement should be worded such that its, it's realization can be verified to the approving authorities' satisfaction. And this time, all well, the articles we're talking about here, the approving authority is going to be the FAA. Now, this should not be confused with verification methodologies. Um, we have verification by test, analysis, um, demonstration, simulation review. So whatever the requirement is, we should be able to verify it by one of those methodologies. Further, is the requirement correct? A good requirement should be correct, needs to be correct. And the different ways to look at this, from the parent requirement down to the component requirements, is what is captured at the component level an accurate depiction of the intent of the parent requirement. So the requirement must be an accurate representation of the avionics article to be developed. The requirement must also be an accurate representation of the need or the source requirement or the parent requirement from which it was decomposed. And finally, we'll look at conformance. Requirements should conform to an approved standard pattern and style guide or standard for writing and managing avionics artifacts. And if you look at the system process used in the aerospace industry, ARP 4754 or ARP 4754A, which is the provision A, section 5.3 and 5.4 provide some of those guidance for capturing and writing requirements. Thank you for joining us, and we'll look forward to sharing more knowledge base with you and hearing back from you.
Thank you.